Good Friday to you, friend. I want you to picture yourself as a member of the first century church under an emperor like Nero or Marcus Aurelius. The Romans are persecuting every Christian they can catch. You and your church family in that first century often met in secret places like covert house churches or in the catacombs under the streets of Rome. Even though it's dangerous, you and many others gather because the more you learn about Jesus, the more you learn to trust and to love God and start realizing that faith is greater than even life. You and others in the church hope you're never caught and forced to choose between life and faith, but you gather with one another because you know God offers even more than Caesar and Rome, the Roman Empire, could ever give. Now, you've learned that in seasons like Lent or on holy days like Good Friday, the stories of who Jesus was and what He did and how He lived out His sacrificial love were invaluable. And so you listen carefully to every story that's told by others in his church. And occasionally you are asked by the priest or what we'd call a pastor to tell one of those Holy Week or Good Friday stories. This year for Good Friday, we are using a 500-year-old tradition called Stations of the Cross. Each of these stations gives Christians a stopping point, a place to carefully hear and remember part of the great story of Jesus' way toward the cross, what's called the way of the cross, and at those places to reflect on what it meant for Him and for us. In the coming moments, we hope you'll listen closely as families in our broader First Methodist family share these stories with us. One final note. When our last reader finishes reading at the final station where Jesus' dead body is laid in a tomb, There will not be a benediction or some comments to close our time and neatly tie things together. In fact, we want the moments after Jesus' death to be awkward and even feel empty and disillusioning. Even then to us, it will be just a fraction of what it was to His first followers. When Jesus' dead body was laid in the tomb, it was sad, a hard and incomprehensible ending. If we can allow the gravity of Good Friday to sink in, maybe Easter Sunday's resurrection will be a bit more more meaningful to us as well. May God bless you by the reading and sharing of these stories, the Word of God, by the people of God. Thanks be to God. And he came out and went, as he was wont, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray ye that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came. With him was a large crowd carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. His betrayer had given them a sign, Arrest the man I kiss. Just then he came to Jesus and said, Hello, Rabbi. Then he kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. One of those with Jesus reached for his sword, striking the high priest's slave. He cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put the sword back in its place. All those who use the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I am not able to ask my father and he will send more than 12 battle groups of angels right away? But if I did that, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say this must happen? Then Jesus said to the crowds, 
Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like a thief? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, but you didn't arrest me. But all of this has happened so that what the prophets said in the scriptures might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left Jesus and ran away. And Jesus is arrested. But Jesus was silent and didn't answer. Again, the high priest asked, Are you the Christ, son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the human one sitting on the right side of the Almighty and coming on the heavenly clouds. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we need any more witnesses? You've heard the insult against God. What do you think? They all came downtown. Pilate tries Jesus. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate responded, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, My kingdom does not originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom is not from here. So you are a king, Pilate said. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. Station 5, Pilate sentences Jesus. During the festival, Pilate released one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. A man named Barabbas was locked up with the rebels who had committed a murder during the uprising. The crowd pushed forward and asked Pilate to release someone as he regularly did. Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? He knew that the chief priest had handed him over because of jealousy, but the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas to them instead. Pilate replied, Then what do you want me to do with the one that you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What wrong has he done? They shouted even louder, Crucify him! Pilate wanted to satisfy the crowd, so he released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped, then handed him over to be crucified. Station 6, Jesus Wears the Crown. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here's the man. Station 7, Jesus Carries His Cross. This is why the Father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. I have the right to give it up, and I have the right to take it up again. I receive this commandment from my Father. As they led Jesus away, they grabbed Simon, a man from Cyrene. 
who was coming in from the countryside. They put the cross on his back and made him carry it behind Jesus. Station 9, Jesus speaks to the women. A huge crowd of people followed Jesus, including women who were mourning and wailing for him. Jesus turned to the women and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Rather, cry for yourselves and your children. The time will come when they will say, Happy are those who are unable to become pregnant, the wombs that never gave birth, and the breasts that never nursed a child. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. If they do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they cast lots to divide his clothing. Station 11, criminals speak to Jesus. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned, for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. Station 12, Jesus speaks to Mary and John. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene stood near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here's your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here's your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Station 13. Jesus dies on the cross. It was now about noon, and the darkness covered the whole earth until about three o'clock, while the sun stopped shining. Then the curtain in the sanctuary tore down the middle. Crying out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands. I commend my spirit. Knowing that everything was already completed in order to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was nearby, so the soldiers soaked a sponge in it, placed it on a branch, and held it up to his lips. When he had received the sour wine, Jesus said, It is finished. Bowing his head, he gave up his life.
Revelation 14, Jesus is laid in the tomb. It was the day of preparation and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies uh, to remain on the cross on the Sabbath, especially since that Sabbath was an important day. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of those crucified broken and the bodies taken down. Therefore the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men who were crucified with Jesus. When they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. However, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.